Welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this edition of Who's Next. Today, we're going to be going all the way up north to Selkirk, Manitoba, Canada, where we find 13-year-old Ben Siliker. Ben, how are you doing this afternoon? Great, Rod. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're more than welcome. Thanks for being on, man. I, I think you're the first person from Canada I've ever had on the show. So it's really? not, we're in Florida. It's not snowing up there, is it? Um, no, I'm, I had to wear shorts today. Okay. It's plus 30, I think. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So what really made you decide you wanted to be a, a race car driver? Where did that all start at? Well, I want to be a racer because my dad and my grandpa raced and um, I raced um, L lock carts at the track that my dad raced his uh, modified at. Okay. And so what age did you get started? Well, I got started racing on my dad's track when I was five years old. But when I was four years old, my dad built me a dirt track to start practicing at. All right. So you've had you've had a lot of laps, probably in a lot yeah. of different places. So let's I, I know when I was kind of looking at your bio, I saw all of the different types of cars that you've actually raced. And that's a pretty impressive list. So just share with the viewers a little bit on some of the different type of cars that you have ran. Well, I ran a bunch of different cars, but the best cars that I found that have been teaching tools have been the quarter midget to keep me smooth on the wheel and learn car control. And then the 500 also, the Outlaw Card 500 also helped a lot with car control because of the enormous power to weight ratio. And it teaches you throttle control and how to throw a car into the corner. So all of that experience as you start moving towards your goal um, and, and just let's talk about that real quick. What, what is the goal for, for Ben? Where do you want to be in the next five to seven years? Well, my goal for the next five to seven years is to um, race some level of NASCAR, but still be able to um, race sprint cars. So you want to kind of play that role that Tony Stewart did and, and Kyle Larson's currently doing? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a, a, a lot to be said, I think, from the drivers that get to the NASCAR level. I think of Ryan Newman, again, Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, Ricky Stenhouse. That list kind of goes on and on. But there's a, there's a feel for the car that you learn in that dirt car that you really can't learn on asphalt. And it allows you to be able to take that forward with you. Yeah, definitely. You learn a different feel for a car that you do in asphalt. You learn how to search the track for certain things. Where in asphalt, you learn to be smooth and follow the line. Yeah, and that, and that line, even on asphalt, that thing will change during the middle of the night. We were just in Gateway uh, last weekend with the Arca series, and we watched that kind of transition through the night where you had to run low at the beginning. And then uh, this VHT that they're putting on the asphalt track, that's kind of changing everything. It, it's, uh, yeah. it, it, it kind of creates a lane where there never was a lane before. So it, it's making things interesting. So tell us a yeah, little bit about your relationship with, is it Team Silco? Yeah, it's Team Silco. It's um, a family-run race team that has been instrumental in getting me to where I am today. Okay, well tell us a little bit about what, so you're, you're basically showing up for Silco now and you're racing the sprint car? Well, I'm racing the sprint car right now. I'm racing it for the Nathan and Danielle Moore Lucas Oil team. But um, before that, I was racing cars for Team Silco. Okay, great. So I know you're traveling all over the country, but where do you consider your home track? Well, I don't really have a home track because um, I don't really have a home track because I've raced at 75, around 75 different race tracks to date. But um, I guess the home tracks wherever I am that night. Okay, well, that's a, that's a good philosophy there. So we play a little game with all of our drivers, and this is just a way for the viewers to kind of get to know you a little bit outside of racing. And it's basically called Get to Know Ben in 60 Seconds. You ready to play? Yep. All right, what's your favorite food? Um, my favorite food would have to be steak. All right, favorite video game? Um, my favorite video game is either NBA 2K18 or Call of Duty World War II. All right, favorite TV show? Um, I don't really watch TV, so I don't really have a favorite TV show. Okay, how about a favorite movie? 
Um, my favorite movie would either have to be Days of Thunder or Talladega Nights. All right. Um, how about, since you don't have a home track, what is your favorite racetrack to race at? Um, my favorite track to race at is probably Millbridge Speedway in North Carolina. You know what? I've heard a lot of people talk, give me the same answer when it comes to that. So how about your favorite subject in school? Um, my favorite subjects in school, oddly enough, is math. Well, math's a good thing. You got to be, you got to use yeah. a lot of math when you're setting up cars and stuff like that. So maybe, maybe as you move further along, you get into college, you get into like engineering or something. That'd be a big help if you're going to go NASCAR racing. Right. So your favorite racing series, and we'll talk about what that racing series is today, not maybe where it's going to be in five years. Right. My favorite racing series right now is World of Outlaws. World of Outlaws. Okay, cool. And who's your favorite race car driver? Uh, my favorite race car driver would either have to be Jeff Gordon or Kyle Larson. All right. So both of them kind of yeah. set that path that you want to follow coming from the sprint cars, going to NASCAR, and then still being able to come back every once in a while and jump back in that sprint car and um, kind of not forget where your roots came from. I think that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So Ben, let's just talk a little bit about your racing career. So um, you've got eight years. Um, 11 championships, 450 plus A main starts. That's a lot of A main starts. Have you ever figured up how many races total that you've run? Um, I've never figured out how many races I've, to I've run in total, but one year I did run over 100 main events. So the number must be getting up, up close to 1,000. Oh my gosh, 1,000 races. That's nuts. That'd keep mom and dad kind of busy, right? Yeah, it does. Very busy. <laughs> okay, so in my notes, I have 50 different tracks across the, the U.S. and Canada, but you're saying it's more like 75. Yeah, it's been, since I've been racing a lot of new tracks with the sprint car, it has been getting closer to 75 now. So I know that you ran um, some junior late model stuff out at Madeira for that 5150 energy drink. I, I don't remember back the first year if it was actually under that title sponsor, but that's where it's at today. And now you're in the sprint car. So tell us a little bit about the difference in being in that late model on the asphalt and now running in a sprint car, mostly on dirt. Well, the late model, you have to keep smooth and you drive it a lot differently than a sprint car because for a late model, you lift coming in, you keep it smooth, you keep it straight throughout the corner. In a sprint car, especially in a 360, you try and just throw it in the corner, try and catch the good dirt, and you can afford to throw it in and scrub speed. So I, I probably know the answer to this question. Which one's the most fun to race? Um, the sprint car probably is. Yeah, that's what I that's what I hear from all the asphalt guys. They'll be like, man, that sprint car is a blast. So I want you yeah. to think back a little bit. What was it like to win that first race? We've got a lot of young viewers, a lot of quarter midget racers that are coming out there. They're just getting started this year or kart racers. What do they have to look for that first time they take the checkered flag? Well, I don't really remember what it was like to win my first race as I was only five years old racing an outlaw kart, but it is exciting to win your first race in each new series that I run. So have you, have you come up with some type of a victory celebration that kind of uh, uh, identifies you, if you would? Um, no, not really. But every single time I win, I, put, I take one hand off the steering wheel when I'm going past the checkered flag and pump it in the air. All right. So I've been waiting for somebody to come out and tell me they've learned how to do the little Rico Abreu uh, donut kind of up on his back on a big size sprint car, but I've not ran into anybody that says they're willing to try that. Would you be willing to try that? Um, I'd have to talk to Rico and see how you do it first, but then I would be able to give it a try. Yeah, it's cool. It is awful cool. So let's look back at the last three years, um, starting with uh, 2017. Um, I've got that you had 53 starts, seven wins, 28 top fives, and that was the first time that you made your debut in uh, a dirt modified. Talk a little bit about the 2017 year. Um, well, it was the first time that I made a, my debut in a dirt mod and I raced that around Minas the Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota area. And I even raced at a track here 
near my house in Winnipeg, the co-op Red River Co-op Speedway, and it taught me how to drive a modified and how much different it is from a sprint car and a one on pavement. So what what was the dirt modified like? I mean, I I know like in the Midwest, that's where I'm from. Um, man, modified dirt racing is like the holy grail. Yeah, well, it teaches you different style of driving because you turn it with the rear end and you have to learn how when to upset the car, when to keep it on the bars. And it's difficult to get the hang of, but after you get the hang of it, it's fun to drive. Yeah, and you've, you've actually been the first to win in a lot of different types of cars. And um, I'm sure that's cast a lot of attention on you. So um, I, I got a in my notes here, youngest starter to the Kyle Larson showcase history. So tell us what was that, what was that about? Um, well, I was in a 500 outlaw cart at the Kyle Larson outlaw showcase. And um, we were hoping for a B main and trying to get to the A main. And I went out my heat race and I went from eighth, I think it was to third. And I made it to third and I got it off of points. And I also made the, um, um, the dash, which was really exciting because the only other people that made it were people that run 500s all the time or World of Outlaw or NASCAR drivers. Okay. And I also have you down as the youngest non-wing micro sprint winner. Um, yeah, I won it when I was 11 and you weren't supposed to drive those cars until you were 12. So yeah, kind of makes you the younger. There. You know, one thing that I yeah. think is a misconception about a lot of viewers that are not really tuned in to micro sprints, uh, mini sprints, whatever you want to call those, um, is they think it's really just a bunch of young kids racing that when in fact, there's some guys that have been, you know, in their 20s and 30 years old, in some cases even older than that, that compete at that level. Um, yeah, it's a lot of the restricted class is more for younger kids and then you get into the gnawing and the wing opens which it actually is an adult class and a lot of adults run it and it teaches you a lot all right so who are your biggest supporters i probably know the answer to this question too but i just want you to share that with um, my biggest supporters would have to be my family yeah it takes a it takes a family and i think that you, you kind of break them in from what i've seen um like if you're a quarter midget racing family, oh my gosh, there's, they work so hard. You guys are traveling all over the country. They're playing tow truck. They're playing every part that you need to be. So family is very important. That's what makes racing so, so um, uh, such a great sport to be a, a part of because I, I see that, that you know what, even though guys that you're out there and you're gonna compete against, sometimes if they have problems, it's the other families and team members that are all jumping in to do whatever they got to do to get that person back on the track. Yeah, like you said, it's just like quarter midget at a quarter midget racing at a track is just like one huge family. Everybody helps each other. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I, I encourage people all the time if they've never been to a quarter midget race to go out in your local community and go check one of those out. So who are your heroes in racing? Um, my heroes would have to be Jeff Gordon and Kyle Larson because I grew up watching Jeff Gordon with my dad and then Kyle Larson, um, I've met him before and he just, he go he went down the path that I want to go down. All right. So when Ben's not racing, what, what do you do? Well, I like to go to the gym to stay in, stay conditioned for racing. I also play basketball for my school team and for a competitive team. And then I um, also like to go hunting and fishing. Hunting and fishing. Okay, so what, what position are you in basketball? Guard forward? Um, I'm a power forward for um, our competitive team. And then for the school team, I'm a point guard. Point guard. All right. So the playmaker. So what does the rest yeah. of your 2018 season look like? What are your plans uh, between now and the end of the year? Well, my plans for 2018 are to continue racing the Nathan and Danielle Moore Luke Lissoil sponsored car competing in the Elite Nile Wing Series, and also getting a few races in with the um, Gulf South Tour for ASCS, hoping to possibly run for Rookie of the Year in 2019 with the ASCS National Tour. 
or you're going to have a busy, busy rest of the year. Do you know how many races you've got left in front of you for this year? Have you mapped that out yet? Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I think we have something for just this summer alone. We have around, we, don't, we have 11 or 12 races planned. Okay. So we talked a little bit about where you, where you want to be in the next five years. Um, just kind of walk me through year by year. I mean, you know, like next year, are you going to try to get back on the pavement a little bit? Or are you two years away from that? You know, I know that the step up through there is K&N, Arca Truck, Xfinity, and then to the cup levels. There's a lot of different paths that you can go to get there. But where do you see yourself fitting into that path? Um, well, next year I see myself possibly running the ACS National Tour. And then the year after that, we're not sure what entirely what we're going to do. But in the next couple of years, I am going to start running pavement again to stay conditioned for NASCAR. All right. Okay, so last question here. Tell us something that most people doesn't know about Ben. Well, when I went to the College and Outlaw Showcase, I was nine years old. I made the A-Main. And I was against NASCAR World Outlaw drivers, and I was out there, and I was the only one that my dad had to come out on the track and buckle me in. <laughs> that, that's funny, because you know one of the things that brings that comes up a lot in these conversations, which literally bro, blows the viewers away. I, I run into family members all the time, and they'll go, "Okay, let me make sure I got this right. This kid's running full-body stock cars, or you know." 360 sprint cars or whatever it is, and they don't have their license yet. That means their mom and dad actually have to drive them to the shop. That just blows people's mind. Yeah. I mean, I hope to get my license when I'm 16, but I will probably fail the first couple times because I'll probably get in trouble for driving two feet. So have you ever seen that Pepsi commercial that Jeff Gordon was in when he kind of goes out to the car dealership and the guy gets in the thing and the, so he's all disguised as some like old guy. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Yeah, I could you see. You put the, can the Pepsi can so you can have the, see the look on the other guy's face. That's right. Yeah, I could see you doing that with some guy with a, the, the DMV. And I don't know how it is up in Canada, but the DMV down in the States is, the guys are all kind of goofy that work there. So that, that'd be funny. So uh, do you want to give any of your sponsors a call out before we wrap up tonight's um, show? Uh, yes, I'd like to thank Nathan and Danielle Moore, Lucas Oil, CSI Shocks, Evolution Racing, and Radical Race Gear for the awesome suits. All right. Well, Ben, thanks a lot for being on us. How about websites, Facebook, Instagram, any of that you want to share with anybody? Um, well, you can visit us at teamsilco.ca. You can see videos of me racing on YouTube at Ben Siliker. You can see our Facebook page at Team Silco, and my Instagram is bensilica24. All right, so here's a young racer that's definitely plugged into social media. He already understands that a big part of getting to that NASCAR level is not just what you do on the track, but it's also what you do off the track and the fan base that you actually create. So Ben, again, I wanna thank you for being with us. Good luck the rest of the 2018 season, and, um, Maybe we'll try to get back later, a little bit uh, later in the year, maybe maybe towards uh, November, December, something like that, and kind of get a recap on how, the, how your season went. Okay, thanks for having me. All right, well, there you got it, everybody. Young Ben Siliker from Manitoba, Canada, racing in the sprint cars, got his eye on NASCAR moving forward. So I want to thank all of you for being with us. As we end up every one of our shows, I want to encourage you to go out and support local racing in your community. And we'll see you back here next week on Who's Next.